Hello everyone and welcome to our final Atmon discussion episode where we're going to be discussing The end of Digimon Universe. I'm so glad it's finally over. No more Digimon in the whole universe. <laughs> so we uh we've watched we've covered the last episode of Digimon Universe Happy Monsters last week, and now we're just going to go over our bits that we loved and out the characters that we loved and you know look back on the series overall and just discuss things. I'm May. And I'm Jay. So as always, we'll just dive straight into it. What were your favourite highlights, the bits of Atmon that you really make Atmon for you? Like, the, the memories that you hold from Atmon? That's a really tough question. It's quite involved. Um, obviously, which, which, which is more than you can say for a lot of Digimon seasons. Like, sometimes you can't even name one favourite. Yeah, Frontier was terrible. It had nothing good in it. Um, in this case, I don't know, There's a there's, you've got to put them in different lists, I guess, right? Because mm. the story itself was actually very well wrapped up, and that's very important to me. Mm. That everything was very consistent. But then you have your emotional high points, which is your airy election and everything. And oh, gosh, yes. Even sort of figuring out... And all the admin coming together to help Astra break out of the, the prison camp, which is all really cool. Mm. Or, like, there's just the classic jokes and stuff that never really got old. Like, uh, we, oh, are, are, we, are you related? Oh, no, we just look the same. Yeah, or, or Afro guy, who never got a conclusion, but he was he, he was had a good there. time. I think the thing is, he was just there. And then when the, the humans were turned into apps, he was just going, was no, no, no. Oh, it was great. Didn't he just do the pose? Like, he didn't even say anything. No, he, said, he said no, but it was a struggle no. Okay. Um, and, uh, I used to be a, um, a minion of Leviathan, but I'm not anymore. And it doesn't matter now. Yes, it y- does. Yes, it does. No, that's, that's one of the... There are a few episodes, and obviously they're the ones that rank the highest in the Apple ranking because I enjoyed them so much, but they're just a few moments that, like, I remember, like, especially episode four, I remember watching that and I was like oh this is actually really good and I remember when we watched the first episode you and I because you were just like this is stupid and you didn't want to watch it at all but I made you and like no look okay here's the deal if you think it's dumb we won't cover it and I'll just cover it solo or I'll well, get someone else to co-host with me just for the Atmon episodes if you think it's dumb if it's like unwatchable and you just don't mm-hmm. want to watch it and you didn't, don't want to do an extra show but after the first one I think the only part you said was dumb was I'm your buddy and then I got used to that yeah but you got used to it and it wasn't done in an annoying way and you were kind of like, you still weren't like, you were like kind of like, a, oh, fine, we'll watch it because it's not awful. But you still weren't happy to watch it. And then like, I think we got to episode four. That's when you were like, oh, this Stuff's is happening. getting good. And then there were a few episodes where it got kind of like, we're not really doing much. Hey, 50 episodes. Give it, considering how many episodes there were, there weren't that many bad ones. No. Whereas if you think of, I don't know. Frontier is a good example. But, but uh, Frontier is unfair because you, okay, think you of didn't adventure. Like think of Digimon Adventure. How many of those are actually good? There are lots of episodes in Digimon Adventure where I just don't remember. Like, if I could name a couple of episodes that like are my favorites, I'd probably like name maybe like ten that I remember really well. And of, of course, it's like the first episode. But the first episode of Adventure is not good. It introduces you to like far so many characters. There's some really classic sleeper jokes that I love in the series. Mm. My favorite. I think one of my favorites when I think about it is. The I don't know which watch app it was. I think it was the workout app that like charges up. It's like my my final form is so powerful and yeah. it plus one on the yeah <laughs> the power ranking. And that that was great. And the thing is that episode I think was like a it was a full I, filler episode. I know. I think that was what we also rated as like a, a fairly average episode. It's like super funny we, though. We liked it. Like we liked it, but nothing really happened. And it wasn't like a like for example Astra's conclusion of his story arc. You could say that was a filler episode, but it also concluded his story arc. And I still think that might be one of the best char- best episodes of the season. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's up there. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and also like the the moment where Astra's escaped and his uncle's like, yes, like his father and I escaped. <laughs> and we get like this flashback and the whole thing's on fire and it's they great. They burnt it down. Mm. <laughs> That's what you do when you don't have apps to help you. But the thing is, when we first started covering Atmon, we were covering Tamers, which you actually said, you know, oh, Tamers is probably the best season of Digimon that you've seen. And then like I... I think you enjoyed Atmon more than I ever saw you even slightly enjoy Tamers. It's so weird, right? Because everyone talks about how Tamers is the best. Yeah. And there was a concern that I would be really... That I would only like Savers because it came right after Frontier. Right? Yeah. Because it was because Frontier was awful. And so what's the reaction? Oh, yeah. well, this must be way better, so it must be decent. And I, where I like Savers is sort of thing... Tamers had stuff, right? Takata was adorable. I like him. I like yeah. Gilmon. And I like the bits and pieces in it. But honestly, I... I have to say that from a fan base perspective, from the outsider that I am, mm. it seems to me that that gets a lot of praise because it must be compared directly to Zero Two. I think it's just compared to all of Digimon altogether, and it was a lot more serious. Like it was a lot darker than other seasons. It went into depths that no other season had gone into. Zero Two kind of touched on the darker side of growing up, 
But Tame has really just got in there. And whereas Atmon is just consistently really fun. Like it, it always has this. It, it sort of it has these themes and things that could be really complicated, and mm. it really only chooses to get in there like sixty percent. Yeah. And it would be nice for it to use the additional time on f- from filler episodes to actually go. Yep. But it doesn't need to because you understand the audience it's for. Mm. And it's still like, and I think I said this when I first watched the first episode of Atmon. I was excited. Like it, it brought me back to sitting down on a Saturday morning or it was I think it was weekday mornings as well the Digimon was on and just watching Digimon and being excited over experiencing this new thing over hearing the intro opening and being so excited meeting the characters and being excited and it's a feeling I haven't felt for a long time and it put me back in that little I'm a child mode and it was great I just want to go back sorry over what I just said there because it's important yeah. which is the you understand what audience is for right it's for children yeah and I feel like in other podcasts we've made you have made that excuse for certain show uh, for yeah. certain parts of the show. This part in Savers is stupid. Well, it's for children. Who cares? Well, I mean, you understand that Atmon is for children as well. But, it, but it, at it the end of the day, up. you go, the story was still clever, mm. right? The story still was internally consistent. Because even while it didn't get overly complicated or overly dark because of its audience, it didn't betray the integrity of the storytelling. Yeah. For that audience, which I feel that other things generally do. Yep. Like, I th- I think Savers, when it gets into its story and tells you, and it, it reveals its hand and says, this is what we are about. I think at that point, they drop all their cards on the floor because they're not they're not here to play, right? They don't care. Yep. Oh, it's just children. They will be happy with whatever we give no, them. No, I see what you mean. And the thing is, I think Atmon has, like, it's aimed at a younger audience than Savers and maybe even Tamers. It's it's clearly aimed at a very young, I'd say, eight-year-old audience. So not particularly mature or grown up. It would definitely please that audience. It would, I, it, I pl- it please me and I'm 24. You're pretty much that audience. Yeah, I'm that audience. So I can really see that, like, yes, it's, it's made for children. And you can sort of say, okay, well, they did this this way because it's for children. But it actually got kind of dark for something made for children. So you're right, like, it is possible for a Digimon series to say, hey, we're aimed at kids, but also be very good. And then, and that one did have problems, but they're just not. I think the the highlights outweigh the problems. What like what problems would you would you identify now besides the shadow, the shadow apple, apple driver? driver? Um, Which honestly, again, I think that your theory that it's a, an artifact is better than there being an explanation that it was Eugene. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense for it to be Eugene, given that he only gets his apple drive later through his story and he yeah. gets asked the question for the first time. Mm. Um, you can also say that there are a few things that were introduced and weren't really continued with. Like, remember that, the insertion that Haru did and it knocked him out. Yeah, but that mechanic isn't relevant. Yeah, and there was another mechanic that was introduced in the Apple Drive toy where if you pressed the AppLink button multiple times while you were applerizing one of your chips, it started screaming, BURST MODE! Okay, well, that's really unfair, because that never even showed up in the show yeah. to be forgotten. Also, they didn't do... What we loved in, in episode four was the whole, we're actually thinking about what the apps do and what their strengths are. And we never really saw that much. You're right. And the whole... The, the standard Atmon abilities, like the DJ or the fighting game or the hack or Googling, we didn't see they that. It pretty much went away. The hacking was the one that lasted the longest. Yes. Because it was useful in the most situations. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I, th- I think that has to do with... Just, I think creativity is low. But like, I feel like it's hard to integrate all that stuff, as interesting as it mm. is. But some things I don't think they brought back because I don't feel like they had time at some points. I know it's because they had a few filler episodes. Bring back UA Hunter J. He's the yeah. best. U- UMA. UMA Hunter J. Yeah, he's the best. I love him. And it's it was sad that he was such a designed and He looked like character. he was going to be a character. And I wish that moment that you wanted uh, was there with uh, n- the caught up man. And we see that there are multiple and someone asks... So you all laid and like, no, they just look the same. That would have been the best. That would be the top of that joke. That would have exp- that that combines the two jokes and explains why you keep seeing him having different jobs. Yeah, like oh, a different he, guy. He's, a, he's a tourist. No, he's a he's a doctor. It just it's it's great, and I would have really liked that. But the fact they don't have it isn't like a negative. It's just like that's an opportunity they could have had. Mm. It would have been funny. The decoration but- on this cake does not make the cake taste better, but it yeah. would have been nice. 
Like, I don't have that many... It's really hard to, to talk about negatives with this show because it's just kind of like, I I believe, like, if I was eight, I'd be nuts over this show because I'm nuts over this show and I'm in my 20s. That's definitely not sad. I promise. I promise that that but feeling is not show, sad. You, look, I'm not nuts over it. I think it's good. If you were eight, you would love this show. I don't know. Well, you love it when you... Maybe you like it when you tolerate it in your 20s. I like it. That's not... That's not mince the words. Like, I don't know. It's, I'm very happy that Atmon is a thing. Like, except... It, it, like it's just it's such a good season of Digimon and it's really sad that it's the best because you, the previous ones was I, I still enjoyed the previous ones you know it's really hard to judge if I'd like this when I was eight what smartphones didn't exist so I didn't have context for a lot of the know, things that you, were happening if you were eight but I wouldn't know yeah I wouldn't know yeah no, no that's fair it's hard for me to say it's just that one's fun and I'm glad and at the start, I was just like, oh, it's just going to be Hunters again, and Jay's going to hate this. No, you thought it would just be the Emoji Movie. <laughs> no, Emoji Movie hadn't come out when this first came out. I know, but that's sort of, that's kind of what I thought it would be, is, oh, phone references, I get it, that's it. Okay, when does it first come out? I mean, like, when I first saw the first episode, I thought, oh, this is just like Hunters, they go into this other world that's parallel to the, it's not the digital world, but it's sort of, like, in line with the real world, and it's this sort of, like, other area, like, in Hunters, it's called the Digicourts, I believe. But yeah, I feel it is the digital world, they just don't say it. Yes. And I was kind of like, oh, well, they're not actually saying, like, if it's just a Digimon, they're called Atmon, it's about phone apps, that seems gimmicky, and they're trying to keep relevant, <laughs> and fine. I, like, from the first episode, I was sucked in, I was just like, oh, this is exciting, this is smart, the character's precious. Also, we got to know who chose the children this time. Yeah, it was just like, you were nice. and you, they weren't called the chosen children until like that one 50. time. Yeah, it was it was great characters. Look, of the main of the main crew, I like everyone. Obviously, uh, Ari is so much better than I expected. Obviously, she's probably the top of the list because of how little I expected to like her to begin with. Oh yeah, I I thought I was gonna hate her. I uh, thought I was gonna hate everyone except for Haru. Astro recovered a lot, oh, so God, much yes. so that he's probably second on there because I wasn't just not expecting it. I think it's like I'm pretty sure you said. Um, I believe I think this was. Uh, I can't remember if this was on the show or just in general. But may you you said at some point did Astro just have bad first episodes? Oh, he did for sure. I I would say that as a definite now because I think looking back as just trying to remember those episodes were just boring like they, they did suck they weren't good and that affected my uh, thoughts on the character because what's his meeting with with Musimon they're dancing in an alley being weird and sad like it wasn't good yeah but everything else was good uh, Haru is precious and I love him and Ray, as much as I like him I do think that I, I got over his sadness about his brother really quickly. But the thing I love about Ray is, and this happened from like halfway on, whenever the characters had filler, like the whole Offmon thing, Ray just said, okay, I'm going to find out more about Leviathan and investigate Hajime and also, I guess, sort of investigate Eugen on the side. Yeah. And he went off and did that. That, that was really good and I appreciate that. And I think what I really like about him is this cooking thing mm. and what that goes to sort of show and develop, which is when you have a character that is essentially consumed by revenge or otherwise consumed by a mission, mm. it can get, it can make them really one note, which it did for a lot of the show. But when he rescues Hajime, you like you see him pretty quickly, but not immediately, sort of switching over to like, okay, all right, life is different now. Mm. What do I do? And there's they've clearly put a bit of thought into that, which I like. Um, did the other characters even exist? Like, are I and Winston, uh, Watson. Watson real people? Like, they don't count, do they? They're just there. They're, they're, they do have impact, I guess, on... All things. I does is show the that they show them the um, secret yeah, they space. Yeah, get a base. And the only thing Watson does is occasionally bring their attention to the evil Atmon hanging around. Yeah, because he's a nerd. Because he, cause he suffers, because his video games suffer. I like his friend looks like a hamster. Yeah, he has... It's a weird group of friends, and, like, they're never relevant. And it's so strange, because it makes me think that... You think of um, a show like a puzzle piece, uh, like a, a puzzle, mm. where all the pieces um, are ready and it's just being put together in front of your eyes until you finally see the complete picture and you go, oh, I understand the story now. Whereas I kind of get the feeling with Atmon, especially because we understand things from the manga and it sort of goes either way and sometimes things in the manga are better and sometimes things in the show are better. Mm. It's almost like they made one and a half puzzles and then they were like, which pieces do we want to actually use mm. in this one? Yeah. 
So what are I and Watson doing? Who are they? They're pretty much pointless. They're the same in the manga. They're just they're just there. And the thing is, it's nice that we get to see other characters besides just oh, the, the Appy drivers, the main characters. And it's something we haven't really had much in Digimon. We've always had, oh yeah, and they sort of like, we, we see their faces, but we don't know their names or their stories or what their personality is. <laughs> well, the thing is, we almost had that and then they ruined it with Kenta and Kazu. Oh no, I was talking about um, in Ken- Adventure that Mimi has these two friends. Well, that doesn't... And then the exact designs come back in Zero Two, except that they're Miyako's friends from her class now. Look, Adventure is a bit unfair because Adventure is a story about eight kids in a world where there are no people. Mm. So there wouldn't be other characters in that show. Like, I understand they come back to the human world eventually, but that show is so designed around these eight kids. Like, why would you bother introducing other characters later? Mm. Whereas in this case, they're in the real world all the time. There could totally be other characters. Um, okay, I see your point. And it makes makes perfect sense. That's what that's what Eugene was. Yeah. In the same Kenton Kazu sense. Yeah, there's always the character who bec- who joins the team later, like later on, and gets a Digivice later on. Yeah, but there doesn't Kenton Kazu were, were after Shuchon, weren't they? And also after. No, they just want they just want to tag along because they want a Digimon. That's right, and they just stumbled the worst one was no, they were before Shuchan. Mar- Mar- Shuchan just showed up no um but it was after leomon yeah j- jury you jury mean, and yeah. leomon um just when was it marine angelmon just shows up like hi i'm here now we couldn't figure out a way to write this into the story so i guess i'm here it's literally in his pocket yeah it's just it's in his pocket and he's like wait what's this it's like a bulge in my no, pocket no it lands this? in front of him first and he just follows him no it didn't yeah pocket. No, it like oh, land- no. oh yeah, it oh yeah, it lands in him, and then like when he's in the 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 spaceship, it's just in his pocket. Yeah, it's just there now. And then he has a digivice now. Great, awesome. See, at least um, Kazu had an actual episode. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want Even either was, of them to have it. It was episode. Jury. It was Jury's episode, but it, it had the Kazu name. It was his battle. It was whatever. like Kazu's battle. I'm like Kazu does nothing. Uh, and Kazu he's... shows compassion for five seconds, and he continues to never do anything for the rest of that show. Um, neither do I and Watson is what I'm trying to get at. And they're in the intro. Why are they in the in the opening? So's nice. At least Knight does stuff. And then he's still there, you know, 20 episodes after he's uh, being defeated. Fun. It wasn't 20. He was defeated in like 35. Okay, good point. <laughs> there weren't 20 more episodes after. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I guess the question then is, is, is Leviathan a character? Um... Because I would say question. no. If you would ask me, I don't think there are any... There are no consistent villains in this entire story. I understand that Leviathan is, quote-unquote, like, the villain, but I would I would hesitate to call Leviathan a villain. I would call Leviathan a hazard or a danger. I don't think Leviathan really has, like, a... A force. I don't think... I mean, I, I think it's more in the manga that Leviathan has an actual thing. I mean... She's humanoid and she's a woman in the manga and her attack is this big dragon thing. Like, Leviathan is a plan, but the kids do not interact with Leviathan, like, at all. No. Until it is so, so late in the future. So the only interaction you have with Leviathan is through Leviathan's agents, which is Mianumon primarily, and then Knight, and then Yujin afterwards. Yes. And all, I guess you would describe them as the villains then. Yeah, but this this is quite good because usually we have the lackeys who are boring and we have the enemy who possibly is interesting. But in this way, it's like the enemy is just kind of like, he's just an enemy. He's just like, he's we, we know what he wants, but he's just, besides that, he's just an enemy and that's fine. And then we have the lackeys who have personality because in the end, we spent more time with the lackeys than we did with the enemies. For sure. And also, I guess you could say Eugen is just a conduit. Right. I mean, he's the, he's he was an agent in some manner, but yeah. he wasn't an antagonistic one until the end. But then he was. I mean, we had the Ultimate Four, who we found out Leviathan gave to them. Yeah, which means that Naito was the was still central to that, even if yeah. he was thrown off before they were defeated. And we had Coachmon, who I guess we could have. Coachmon said... doesn't count as one of the big ones. He was a lackey of Mianumon. No, he was a, he was Leviathan's henchman, and the thing is, they're we, all Leviathan's henchmen. We could have suspected that, like, what, what if this is on purpose? I'm still not sure if that was the case. I don't think the show is that deep into it. No, but it's it showed us. It said, "Oh, the evolutions to get to, no. to get to Kiwami and uh, to, to God were given by." I totally understand what you mean. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think that Coach One saying, "I'm actually your friend now. I'm not with Leviathan anymore." I don't think that's fake. No, I, think I think he honestly believes yes. that. But Leviathan just says. You're in this situation now, oh, no, no, that, and you will I mean. either be defeated and taken, or you will join up with them, and you'll 
part, yes. make part of the guy. Yes. Okay, no, no th- th- that's what I meant. Like, I think Coach Mon is completely legitimate in saying, I'm on your side now, but I feel like Leviathan knew that. I feel like we can, a lot of things can be explained when you just say, yeah, Leviathan knew. You know what's really funny, though? What? When you try to take that understanding and keep in mind that those bad guys who were being set up to fail did not know that and were legitimately trying to win. So, as an example... What if Coach Mon did not turn and killed Aerie? Then, okay. then that God App Mon never happens. See, I think Leviathan has a lot of faith in the main characters to do exactly what they're doing. I think so as well. And he put, he does. He puts a lot of faith in them. And guess what? They're main characters, and so they win. So they were basically the the bad guy wanted them to win until the end because guess- he needed them to succeed. I guess you could say once you remove some of the children from the equation, even though it would delay the plan, it might not delay it forever. So this is like plan A. There might be plan Bs. Well, remember, the kids being there wasn't part of Leviathan's plan. Leviathan Mm. just wanted to get the buddy app, like the... Just the standard Atmons who became the buddy Atmon and then ha- have them as his own. But then Minerva stepped in and put the children in the way and assigned them to these buddy Atmon. Hmm. So what could have happened is when... Genetic predestiny to like these kids strikes again. Al- alternatively, a part of Leviathan's other plan could have been memory wiping the, the Atmon. Okay, you, you, the moment you bring again. up memory wipes, I'm thinking you haven't thought he this did. through. He did memory wipe them. What? When, when their duos were destroyed, the link was broken and then he, they had no memory of the, the character. But that's, that's not the same thing that's not the same thing as i have memory wiped you it's i've broken this machine and that was a side that's a okay, side no, effect no, when i say memory wipe i'm i'm directly referring to that 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 could have alternatively been another part of his plan where he used the now unlinked buddy to join him and then he already has the ultimate four so he, he could have gone two ways there, and I think he set it up in that way. Could be. But also, he knew that even if they got together with their Atmon again, he'd still he, it would still work out for them. It's a fairly complicated story. Yeah, and that's what's good. It's good about it, and it also makes you think, oh, are we doing this? Are we doing this? But it's not like we're... It's, it, there are so, it's so hard to find problems in Atmon, for me personally. Who was the Shadow Appy Driver then? Eh? Okay, besides besides the Shadow Appy Driver, but we can sort of just say I that, honestly prefer it being an artifact. Yeah, we could just yeah, we could just say that it was just like, oh that's just them saying, Yeah, sure, why not? That sounds legitimate, let's do that. Even if it's not, right? Sure. But I'm I mean, I'm I'm pretty easy when it comes to this. Mm. So that one was good. That one, that one was good. Do we have any other negatives? Because I feel like this is hard to go. I don't think there are any negatives that like bring the show down as a whole. Yeah, there's nothing that anything. ruins the show. There's nothing that you just say. Well, then Atmon's ruined. Atmon's trash now. And that was a worry that we had. Well, every other Digimon season has it. Like we had a worry. Like, what if it all falls apart at the end? Nothing's explained. It asks more questions. I didn't think they would have time. Honestly, there were enough questions, and obviously they didn't answer the one we were really curious about because it was forty-eight episodes long. Maybe kids don't. Maybe the kids who watch this didn't care may i know that there was stuff in tv shows when i was young i was like what's up with that and i would want to know so i'm not i don't think that you can assign that to a majority of children who watch this mm. um but they did a lot of really really good subtle work like the explanation that eugen has an athlete drive from minerva because he experienced real human emotion that mm. was done in like four seconds yeah and that you're right, that was 10 four seconds, it was just... That explains that so much about the story. It may... I don't know if you remember this, but the first time we watched it, you didn't catch it. I had to get you to rewind it so that you would see the line. Yeah, because it was just... It was so, it's such a fast sort of thing, and I'm just like, okay, that was the final question that we had, and it's great. It, it really answered things, and that's... It makes it good when it when a show answers questions that you have, and especially when it answers them as soon as you ask them, which was honestly quite often the the, the case with that one. Like the, something would happen, and then Jay would say, "This is stupid. What just happened?" And then a character would say, "This is stupid. What just happened?" And then another character would explain it, and Jay would just sit there and say, "Well, okay." You know, it's a classic. What explosive punch? But that's a kick. And then yeah. It's and then Astro goes, "But but that was a kick." I think that was something that we we often joked about at the start of the show. Like, what if they made the show and they sat some kids down in front of it? And then whenever the kid had a question, they would put that into it. It uh, Astra says that line now. Yeah. So before we go into anything else, I just want to talk about characters and the what we've thought about characters throughout the show because we kind of just glossed over the characters just what then. We didn't gloss over anything. We went through okay, all no, of them. Okay, okay. I mean, gloss over like, yeah, I'm bad with words. So listener Noam put together a table featuring every favorite character that we've se- said is our favorite character for each episode. Wow, okay. So I, I, So what I did was I took that. And for episodes one to eight, 26, 34, 43, we didn't have, we didn't say favorite characters. Okay. And for episode 50, Jay didn't say one. Okay. 
So overall, my favourite character, which is not surprising in the slightest, was Aerie at 29%. Solid. So 29% of the time I, I said Aerie was my favourite. And I think my chart doesn't include Haru for some reason. But Haru was also there five times, which is the same as Aerie. So he would also get the same percentage. Except maybe the percentage is wrong because for some reason this chart that was made by Google Sheets is lying to me. How could how could five times be 30% of your answers if there are like 50 episodes? Yeah, I told you that the, the, the chart... The, the chart that uh, Google Sheets made, but the numbers the numbers are right. So I said Haru five times, Eri five times, Astra three times, Ray twice, Eugen no times, Gashmon once, Dokmon what zero times, Musimon three times, Hackmon one time, and Offmon twice. What's the total of that? Because that seems like less than forty. Uh, oh no, but some other times there were other characters that I mentioned. Wouldn't they be on the list? No, because the because I had to do the list like with each thing, it would have taken too long. But what? other characters I mentioned were like more like one offs. So I just listed the main characters. I know that in one episode, uh, episode 17, both Jay and I said Aerie's fan, which was the little girl. Oh, that was cute. Um, and we, we both often quite quite often said Time on or Globemon. In one of them, we said Jenny and Astra's dad. What? So Jenny's Astra's mum and Astra's oh, dad. Right. Also, I liked uh, Warodamon, because the best. Oh, the restaurant owner, we both liked. I liked, uh, you, you liked Stellamon at one point. Stellamon's great. If, he was like not explained. He was so not explained that like, because I'm, I feel like they were trying to build up like, oh yeah, a Cameramon, whatever. Hmm. Like, it was never really clear if he was with Leviathan. I think he was. I said clouds laugh at one <laughs> point. <laughs> Also, you like Caught Up Tita's. Man once? I love Caught At Up least Man. once. Great. And well, you, what was my favourite? What did I say? Uh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go into that a bit. But also, um, another thing that... You, you also like Your May Hunter Jay. Yeah, he's the best. Okay, Jay liked Haru eight times, yes. Eri seven times. That's goddamn right Astral I like Haru. once, Ray five times. Ray's great. Leave me alone. Eugen once, Gatchmon once, Dokumon once, Musimon twice, Hackmon once, and Offmon once. <laughs> Would Musimon split his pants? I think that was probably the episode you said. <laughs> That's so good. But like, I beat you with my museum on style. <laughs> that was great. So that was just a quick oh, no. rundown overall of our favorites. Eri will Eri and Astra um, Astra there. Uh, Eri and Haru tying for my favorite is completely accurate because I love Haru, but I love Eri, and I think that our friendship ended with Mimi. Eri is my new best friend. Eri is best girl now. She, I, I think, I really think she is, and I still want to see Eri and Mimi hanging out and being idols because that'd be so cute, right? I guess one like, might say zero two. Mimi would hang out with her. I don't know, it's just... Oh, I really like Eri. She's the best. So, surprises. What surprised you about this? And you can't just say that it was not terrible. Okay, I'm okay, surprised actually, that, that it is, wasn't terrible. That is actually... Because I was... You know what? I love Digimon. You got and me. I, and I was surprised. Because I was like, oh, this sounds bad, but I'll watch it anyway and I'll feed it money because, like, I, I want Digimon to do well. And, but maybe maybe I'm too old for this Digimon thing now. Nope, nope, nope. Still good. Still got it. I guess the one thing this show does is I understand that you're thinking, okay, well, that's the end of Atmon forever. We'll probably never see it again. It does say Digimon Universe, though. So it is likely there'll be more stuff under that brand. Yeah, I'd like that. Maybe with Iron Watson, since we've given them characters. Yeah, it's not. What about if we just had a spin-off series about you and my Hunter J, and he's like... He's, That's he, nonsense. He's following around all the happens, happenings of Atmon, but he doesn't know what Atmon are. I don't think that... that you I think that wouldn't be good as a series. Yeah, I know. It'd be good as an episode. Okay, but I would have liked that as an episode. Like, replace the recap episode and just have you and my, the adventures of you and my Hunter J. That would have been really funny. If like he's following around the story, but is trying to like make him up his own ma- his own narrative of what was going on, mm, that'd be great. And just sort of like yeah, and they could have done that. They could have still had a recap episode. They could have had a recap episode, but also ate their recap episode too, right? Absolutely. I always like when a show will take, I guess, what would you call a standard piece of media like function. The recap episode, or the flashback episode, or a clip show, cl- yeah, a clip show, exactly, and just totally play with it. Like, um, uh, Rick and Morty did one really recently, and it's a, it's a classic now. It's something that people have done, and it's always really good. The clip show of clips that you never actually yeah, saw, the, the, the fake clip show, like, oh, remember this? Communities like, was really yeah. good. Because they because they were playing it like, do you remember the time we? And then they would cut back to, I don't remember this. 
this mm. and then construct their own new story and yeah. flashbacks. And that that, that would have been good. I would have liked to have you and my Hunter J and we have like, I don't know, we just see Astra, Eri, Haru and Ray disappear somewhere. And it's when Knight's watching over them. And then we also have just you and my Hunter J's watching. He's like, oh, they've gone somewhere. And he's like freaking out. That'd been great. Uh, so my main surprise was the fact that they did the power of love quite well. They said, oh, so he was a, he was actually attracted to Haru as a friend and they wanted to become friends and he actually started to love him like genuinely and not just because I was programmed to and he got a heart. And the fact that that was something that was years in the making before Atmon started because they were childhood friends. And the fact that they sort of had that there and it was something that was developing over the whole series and it wasn't just like, the magical tears of love have revived me. Yeah, it, w- it wasn't, I really like this guy. So with no story development whatsoever, um, my feelings will just solve the problem. Yeah. It, it totally told you in advance, this is what it's like. And most importantly really most importantly it's totally in line with the themes of the show yeah and it wasn't oh this person i met yesterday is a robot it's this person i met several years ago and has been a big part of my life and basically told me i was a protagonist and i love him and he's the most important person to me is a robot and now i have to choose if i have to kill him or not what i mean is like take frontier right you would say that ends with a big power friendship moment where they cry and they they literally bring someone back to life what's the theme of frontier what's frontier about trains i would say being generous that it's about exploration and perhaps defending a home that you didn't know you had yeah and i guess that's why it's called frontier yeah and that's that's a reasonable thing to have a show about Mm. it's not about friendship but it's reasonable to have it about that generally so if they were to draw it up about you know defending the digital world maybe but bringing someone back to life there's nothing consistent there yeah whereas i would say atmon very clearly is about the line between being human and being an ai and where ai like and their emotions and their experience if that is real and so their friendship being real and love being real and effective on them in an irrational way the same way it would affect a human is totally in line with the themes that it's trying to get across this is also very well done in v tamer mm. which we are current covering right after this yes um, no don't reveal our secrets that we record podcasts all at once no we sometimes we do uh and which is also a story literally and it's way more upfront about it mm. it's so it's so upfront about it they tell you the story is about how if you are put emotions into training your Digimon and you become friends with them, they get way stronger. And that makes you a way better tamer uh, mm. of Digimon, which is essentially to imply that you should be social and a nice person and that will you'll do better in your life. Whereas the big evil bad guy is a total emotionless robot. No, he's, he's emotionless about it and uh, thinks he's doing everything in an optimal way, but mm. without any emotion and that's his downfall essentially. So that's, again, with totally consistent with the themes of the story so it can be done yeah it's just it's super easy to do badly the majority of the time it's done badly and i think the place we both really hate it from is doctor who yes because doctor who really devolves into it very quickly um, in a bunch of seasons, I can't remember what the exact numbers would be. And quite often they be. said, "Oh, and turns out the most important power that humans had was the power of love." And I think that's like a direct quote from at least five episodes. <laughs> and when it gets like, I think it was well done the first time. And then Probably. I think the episode did so well, they were like, why don't we just, why don't we just escape from any plot holes we ever fill in? Just be like, oh, we have, it's fixed. The plot hole has been filled up with all our love. Because the problem is that in an episodic show where your story begins and ends in the hour you're watching it, uh-huh. you can't build up a level of emotional, um, like, you can't build emotional capacity to the point where you go, no, I totally understand the amount of love here probably could push the thing one way or the other. Mm. If you're trying to close space portals with love, like, I don't know if I believe you. Mm. And that's, the science fiction show has to at least lean a little bit on the science and a little bit on the fiction. At least try, and I think be internally that, consistent. I think that the fact that, you know, AI also have the power of love, I think that's a that's that's an interesting idea as well, right? What do you mean? Like an AI developed emotion bes- like, and learned about love. I don't think the that's... the power of love and That's not what the power of love is. The power of love in this context is the ability to change a robot's programming through mm. y- your emotional connection with it. Whereas in this case, it just felt love and that was the answer. Mm. So I wouldn't say that was... He experienced... 
he, he was the subject of the power of love. Like, I, I know I spent a lot of the time, like the past like 10 episodes, just saying, please don't fix it with the power of love. But they I did it well. I, of, I often said, yep, I'm, I'm open to be proven wrong, but I just don't want them to try to do power of love because I'm like, can, like the majority of times power of love is done is done badly. But then they did power of love. And you know what? They did it well. And the thing is, for me, I, I could see it going the other way. I could have seen it being like, you have to recognize that friends, you might have once had friends, but you have to accept that if they become toxic, you should be able to let them go mm. and cut them out of your life, etc. And that's a really mature lesson that probably is not appropriate for the audience. And Eri did it too. When Eri found out, oh, Al Corp owns the idol company I work for, I guess I'll quit. And then everyone says, well, you can't quit. That's like your dream. And she says, no, I'll become an idol some other way. I can still do this. I just can't do it. I just have to cut it out. of. I can't have to cut myself out yeah. of this because it's owned by Leviathan. And, I think and that's, that's a very... Very mature thing. It's a very mature lesson. It's very, it's very hard to put together. And I would have really respected it if they went that way, but it wasn't necessary in hindsight. Yeah. As much as I would have liked it. No, it, it, it's good. It's. And I mean, another thing I really liked was, and this is something that a lot of Digimon seasons have not done. They explained plot convenience. Like, remember the time in Adventure, how they just went underwater and oh, we found the tags, and then they kept on finding the crests, but it was exactly where they wanted to go. Yeah. In this case. It's really easy to explain why the kids found everything they needed to when the bad guy was helping them. And that's that's such an easy explanation. But one of my problems that I have with Digimon is that, as I said, they'll just walk into things. It'll be very convenient. Like, oh, but no, we're stuck in a cave. Oh, no, we're stuck in a cave. We're going to get murdered. Oh, what's this? The thing I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, it clears the path. Because you know what show does it really well as well, in a really simple way, but it's not this way. Hmm? Dragon Ball. Hmm. What do they do? I have a radar that shows me where the things we want are. Yep, so they're not just going to walk into them, they're actually looking for them. But it doesn't tell me anything about the area, we just know that it's that way. Yeah. So your plot convenience always arises from their traveling to a specific place, led there by a piece of information they're very interested in. In this case... We are going to the tag where we know where it is, right? If that was the case, we know it's in this area. And if it got them out of it after that, that's reasonable. Because they were in this cave system to find it. That's all right. They're not playing soccer on a field and just accidentally dig under one of the goals. That's a weird thing to do. Well, they, they were trapped in the goal, remember? I do remember and that. And they got escaped. Because here's the thing about that story, right? Mm. Is if you were to put them in the other goal, they yep. would have died. Yes. Yep. Unbelievable. Or if they were hiding in another cave without the Crest of Courage in it. Or if... Okay. The soccer field one gets me more because yeah. it's like... It's even the same area. Because the cave is like, oh, you could be on the other side of the cave. But this one is here. The other side yeah. of the field's over there. And they're equally... They're equal places to capture them. Takedu's one was also in a random cave. But there are a few that were okay. Like, Sora's they didn't really hunt for. It just was... It was in the plot and it was because of Datamon trying to clone her. But the one that like... Mimi's annoyed me. They, just they, in a li plant. they literally just walked that they literally drove a boat to it <laughs> they drove a boat into it by accident okay but one of them that i actually liked was yamato and koshiro finding theirs in a well but they well in a well actually they like koshiro said my crest is throw is like is doing the thing and they're at the piximon's house hey yamato do you want to go look for it and they actually actively look for it and they said well it's down this well and he has he, he like uses his intelligence to find it more or less and that's fine and that's like that's probably the only one that like i can say arguably isn't entirely plot convenient because that's sort of that's the issue with stories where you're looking for some looking for lots of small things yeah is how do you find lots of small things because I don't know if you've ever thought about this. It's really easy to find people. Yes. Right? If you're looking for a person, it's if you put some thought into it, you go, all right, I know the basic places they hang out, or I know these things, or you can always backtrace them well enough, long enough and you understand human nature enough. Yep. You can go, I can probably find this person with 90% accuracy with enough information. That's yes. fine. If you take a small piece of metal, say a coin or a crest yes. or anything, and you were to dump it anywhere in the desert it becomes impossible to find the only way i would say you'd be able to find that thing is by tracing the person who put it there yes because that makes sense those are all reasonable steps yep. how would you find that thing in the desert there's no way you have to comb the whole well, thing with it, a metal detector it was still put in a desert so it was sort of like a needle in the heddle sack situation but it wasn't so it was, it was still in the heddle sack but it sort of also had a neon light pointing towards it saying oh by the way it's directly here i'm pointing at right now but but how close do you have to be to see that neon light it's you very to... bright it's very it's like a beanstalk in the distance wait what are you talking about because that's not how the, the crests work i'm trying to relate it back to this okay yeah so 
if if the, if the crest is just in a random spot somewhere and you have no person to trace to it, it should be essentially impossible to find. So stumbling upon them eight times in a row, it begins to feel like divine intervention, mm. which the show never says there is. They're just really lucky. Yeah, and they have. Th- and the thing is, that's why plot convenience is annoying. It's just like, how lucky do you have to be? Imagine if you didn't, you'd die. I'm watching Danganronpa right now, and there's a character whose thing is that they're intensely lucky, mm-hmm. and every time they do anything, it shows you the chain of events to how they get the thing they want Mm. and it's always completely absurd but you're like well he's really lucky so i guess (laughs) like that's his deal it's Mm. allowed to be that so yeah atmon's really good so we're trying to really trying to get at because it explains all this without needing to do anything yeah and another surprise and i think this is like my last surprise is that ray kept on pointing out that they could have been fighting leviathan during the filler episodes and i really like that like in the one episode he just says hey yeah this is nice but also leviathan Leviathan? Yeah, like, is this important? Yes, all these at Monaco and whatever, because from these video games, but it doesn't actually matter. Yeah. He says no one's actually dying, and yes, I see it's an important thing, but we can just sort of do this later. Like, no one is dying. And I appreciate that sense of priority, which very few anime protagonists tend to have, I think. At the same time, uh, it never stopped them from getting in those fights anyway. Yeah, and Haru was like, that's nice, Ray. I'm busy. But Agumon, though. Have you ever heard of the protagonist? Because that me. Do you have any other surprises? No, I think I think that covers it. We've talked about Atmon a lot, dude. We've done 53 episodes now about yeah. them. Well, actually, I've done more because I did the ones by myself before. Well, I wasn't there. I know. Um, on to other bits. I just want to compare with the manga for a second. Just very, for, for a very quick second because my Japanese is terrible. So, two extra Atmon hang out in the library basement. And this is Docmon and Gamblemon. And they, they were working alongside Leviathan and, and as with Mianumon in that in that group. But then once they defeated Mianumon, they kind of came along. Also, one of them has a Gilmon plushie attached to their belt. Oh. So they just kind of hang out and they're friends. And they hang out in the library basement and it's great. Now they're Watson. So Knight has a duo and Appy Rise is Duesmon. Sure. So that's his buddy. Because Eugen's not a robot in this, is he? No. Yeah, also, yeah, Eugen's not a robot. Pretty big thing. He's just a guy. He's just like, he's just a guy that Haru really likes. And also he has off. I assume. Yes. He does show up and he does have Offmon. So he's just another Apple driver. Yes. So Leviathan is a humanoid creature who controls an attack. It's pretty cool. With a form of a multi-headed dragon. So basically imagine Leviathan in the anime, but this is Leviathan's attack and Leviathan's like this woman. And Uh, it's this interesting design and it's like, it's kind of cool in the way that like, oh, she's completely humanoid. Like she's not just like a big scary dragon. She's, and she's what you'd expect an AI to look like. And of course, like she has a a a feminine form because Minerva Mm. was given feminine pronouns. Yes. And was always called, oh yeah, she. She, she is Minerva. And a feminine name. Well, I think it was always an it, wasn't it? Was it he? Um, the thing is the subtitles. I don't know if he that he was called Cut It, which is a, is a means he, but I don't think he was called Kanajor because I would have picked that up. Okay. But Cut It is a bit harder to pick up. But I don't think that it was really specified. And yeah, he's just AI. He's just Leviathan. You, yeah, as mentioned, Yujin is a human, but he's still important to Haru and everything's the same except Yujin's a human. And I don't think Shutmon has like the the random aggressive issues. What, like, why would he need them at this point? Yeah. And the end of the manga has Leviathan installing himself on, well, herself on the, on Haru's phone. And the last scene is Haru's, like, they're all sitting together and they're hanging out and they're eating. Also, Knight's hanging out with them now. Yeah, he's their friend, whatever. Like, oh, they became friends with Knight. And the thing is, like, the whole thing is, it is power of friendship. Just Haru was just like, let's become friends <laughs> instead it's, of fighting. It's, damn it, it got me. It's just so cute, and we see a blip, it, like his little phone goes blip, and then he looks at it, and there's a Minerva app, and it just says installing, and it's Leviathan's app. Because they're friends now too. Yeah, just like, oh, the moral of the story was, Haru wants to make friends with everyone. That's not what a moral of a story okay. is. The moral of the story is make friends with AI, the AI. Yeah, before they kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Skynet wouldn't have happened if they were just friends with it. Also, we didn't mention this much, but the Haru and, and this is, I'm, I'm done talking about the manga now, because like I Japanese is bad but my Japanese is bad more like so we also didn't talk much about the character songs and Haru and Gatchmon's character songs which by the way Jay loves it's a good one was in the final episode during the epilogue that was adorable and so yeah we, we didn't talk about how good the character songs are they're all great I love them it, it, they're fantastic Ares is great Ash is great Ray's is great Eugen's is okay but it's whatever fine it's I just it's, it's great also we didn't get a Leomon death well there was no Leomon in it he's not an Atmon Ujimon looks like a Leomon nah that's a stretch he's a dog Dogmons Woo! I would now like to get on to this listener survey that I put out. 
So first of all, there is a currently running survey, which is the best of Digimon overall. And this has best seasons and best episodes. And you can still complete this. So as of when I wrote this down, 191 people have completed the survey and all questions were compulsory. So first of all, we asked, what is your favorite season of Digimon? And amazingly, Atmon did pretty well. It was third favorite overall. So Digimon Adventure was second and Digimon Tamers was first. And only six people, which was 3.1%, thought it was their least favorite season, making it was the third least least like season wow that's an odd statistic so 10.5 percent said it was their favorite season which for a new season that later on you find out that like only 55 percent like no 45 percent have watched it 55 percent haven't watched atmon considering it's 10 percent of 45 percent like that's it's doing pretty well for a new season so it, it, it did pretty well there is that 4.5 percent is that how that math works what no, what for, no what? Four, 10% four, four, of 4 point... Oh, sorry, 10% of 45%. I think so. I don't know. Math is that 4.5? Neither of us... Like, I did university maths, but it was, like, for physics, so I it was chose not to do maths so that I could do law. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I chose law so I didn't have to do maths. Yeah, I still had to do university-level maths. And so, as for favourite leaders, which was another question on this, Haru ranked the third most popular leader, and again, it was behind Adventure and Tamers. Was Takata number one or number two? Um, I, th- I would think he'd be number ta- two. Taichi was number one. Yeah, that makes sense. So, Taichi had 39.8%, and Takato got 18.3%, and Haru got 14.1%. You want to know who was in... I bet you can guess who was in fourth place. Fourth? Yeah. Um, Masaru? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 11% Masaru. As for least favourite... Davis all day! Uh, well, th- 30.4% of people said Davis. So, yeah. Yeah, murder him. And then 26.7% said Davis 2.0, who is Taigaru from Cross Wars the Young Hunters. I guess I don't get, know that one yet. Get ready! Get ready! Oh, don't tell me he's Davis again. Oh, he's just Davis, but worse. Oh, what? No! Don't do this to me! I mean, I think he's worse. Maybe. Um, anyway, I'm so... Set now. Only 10 people, which was 5.2%, said that Haru was their least f- favourite leader. Which is pretty good. He was the... It, you know, his least favourite. That's good. Least, least favourite, I mean. On to episodes. The... This was the last question I'll, I'll go over through the Best of Digimon survey. So, as I mentioned, 55% of respondents haven't watched it yet. And 4.7% didn't remember their favourite episode. And 10.5% didn't remember their least favourite episode. So, the most popular episodes, according to this, was episode 52, which was Our Singularity. The ending. Yep, which 14 people, or 7.3%, said was their favourite. Episode 19, the Net Ocean is in a big pinch. 11 people, or 5.8%, or episode 45, the big clash, Gatchmon versus, no, Gatchmon versus Ugamon, but I've t- made a typo and wrote Gatchmon versus Gatchmon. Whoops. I, don't, I mean, it was a fine episode, I don't... So, nine people said that was their favourite, or 4.7%, uh, but I feel like people said that was their favourite because Ugamon was in it, which is fine, that's a legitimate reason, and also it was an okay episode. As for least favourite... We, I, mean, I bet you can guess. I can, you, you can probably guess these off the top of your head. Well, it's gonna be the recap as the worst one, and then uh, what was it? Was it? I don't remember if Perorimon, sorry, Miss Perorimon one was pretty low. The Offmon runs away. What, you mean Gatchmon? So Gatchmon runs you away. Got it, you of got Offmon. it in the order. So the uh, the most least favorite was episode 26, I Am the Protagonist, Encounter with Gatchmon, which got 16 people, or 8.4%. Yeah. Then, 7 people, or 3.7%, said that Docmon's love, Gourmet App, was was their least favourite, or episode 29, But He's No More, Gatchmon's Run Away From Home. I can't believe I got it. Which 4 people said was their least favourite, or 2.1%. And what, well, then there's like Astra's second episode? Or I, is, is I, I think so, but we'll, we'll go through our, our least favourites later in a bit. No, so, we've already done it. Like we did it like every episode. No, no I'll, I'll I'll cover it. Also, I I have some great sound bites for the episode. So only one episode and one person agreed that episode four was the best episode. That's all right. They don't have to. Which like is just outrageous to be honest. Nah, it's fine. So the next survey that I put up yesterday, which is about favorite characters in that one, and thirty one people responded, considering it was up for twenty four hours. That's fine. So, for favourite Appy Driver, of course, Haru is the most popular character at 41.9%, and Eri is the second at 25.8%. For least favourite, Eugen got 39.3%, and Astra was the second least favourite at 32.1%. The least least favourite was Eri! Nice! Yay! Uh, the next one was favourite Buddy Atmon, where Hackmon wins, surprisingly, at 38.7%, and Offmon comes in second at 32.3%. For least favourite, nobody picked Gatchmon, and 40% said Musimon was their least favourite, and Offmon came second again with 26.7% and Dokumon was close behind. 
Our two favourite non Appy Drive character. Could you could you guess who was the uh, the favourite here? Um, uh, it wouldn't be what's his name? Um, Hajime, probably not. Uh, wouldn't be Watson because Watson sucked. Um, how broad is this? Anyone who got any screen time. Well, one person said you are my Hunter J. Nice. Um, oh, this is. It was a landslide, just so you know. Oh, a landslide. Hold on. Let me... Oh, it's Afro Man. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, Caught Up Man, (laughs) 41.9% said their favourite. Well, he shows up in most of the episodes. And the second place is actually quite surprising. With 19.4%, Yeah. I. I'm not shocked by that. Yeah. I just think it's surprising. And then I actually left off Knight, but I left a an other option. So with a combined count of 16.1%, we have Knight. Yeah, Knight's And cool. I'm happy to see, as I said, I'm happy to see you and my Hunter J there, even though we only got one. That was me, wasn't and, me. <laughs> and Hajime also did well with 9.7%. As for least favorite, you can guess this. Um, least least favorite non non Appy driver because one hundred percent is yours too. What? It's Watson. Oh, it's not even my least favorite. He's just a nobody. So Watson got sixty four point five percent, and Court Up Man and Hajime were tied for second least favorite at twelve point nine. I'm pretty sure I like Aries manager less than Watson. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. That's fair. I just forgot she was a character. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So those were the listener opinions. I I think they were fairly solid. Like it's it is surprising that you no know, no no one else likes episode four, but it's, it's fine. The uh, the least favorites were not surprising at all because they pretty much match up with our least favorites, which I will now go into the ranking. Ranking. I'll go through the bottom ones and then I'll go through the top. So our least least favorite was I'm a protagonist in the meeting with Gatchmon, and then we have a buddy cancellation. Gatchmon runs away. Then we have Dokumon's love gourmet Apple Mary Perot attack. Then we have in fourth like yeah fourth place of least favoriteness not feeling very good in a big pinch Astra's interesting move operation which was on about fighting and then the fifth in the fifth least favorite was uh, the third Apple drive Torajiro was an app tuber so that that's not too surprising why would it be surprising at all they're our rankings yeah we, we've been telling people this for like yeah. a year okay now up to our top ranking which I'll go from fifth to first number the road to the top idol, Coachmon's intensive training. Then, number four. episode forty-six, the oath be- beneath the starry sky, the great rescue for Astra Operation. Then, number three. We have episode fifty-two, our singularity. Then, number two. We have episode thirty-six, the conclusion of general election, the hand of devil approaches Eri. Then, of course, our favorite. I shall have you in a costume. Cameramon's Halloween scandal, episode four. Never falling for the top episode. Never, never going down. And Such a good episode. I think it has to do with also just the impression it left on us that like, oh yeah, this show's probably worth watching. Yeah, and that was sort of like a that was the moment where it stuck. Like the previous episode one, two, and three were good, but episode four was really just it really got me. It was just like, yeah, this is good, and it was just fun and well, well done. Like it, it did what it wanted to. And if I want, if if someone said, hey, show me an episode of Atmon, I'd show them this one because you don't have to know any information about what's going on. But it sort of teaches you all the rules of the show by itself. Yeah. I mean, we already knew Cameramon from the previous episode, but the recap would, it explains it fine. Mm. And we still got the recap like later on as well. Yeah. And it's, you get the multiple fights, right? I think he's, he fights Navimon in that one, right? No, that's the no, first that's episode. That's episode two, he gets Navimon. That's a pretty good one too. And then at the end of that episode, uh, Cameramon shows up and he's all like I-, I will fight you and he's like okay but what about app fuse and then cameramon leaves and then episode three is role play mon and then episode four he shows up again he's like i can also app fuse with my shadow no, buddy is he just says you're not the only one who can app fuse yes he doesn't mean that he has a buddy he never says it. I was wrong. And then Gashmon said, but Haru's the only one. The, it, only Haru has an Apple Drive, as if to imply that there might be someone who has an Apple Drive, including, you know, the big blacked out hand holding an Apple Drive. But none of that happened. That 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 wasn't a thing. Never. It was just an impression that Gatchmon gave us incorrectly. That's yeah. it. Because the question, right... And I said it before, which is, you know, someone has to ask the crew of that one who the Apple driver would have been. And now that we have an answer to that, that's great. Because that answer new que- asks new question, you have to follow that up with, okay, in that case, how did he get his Apple, his Apple drive later from Minerva for the first time? 
At which point you're asking them too now? many questions and you're uh, and you're annoying them. So that's probably mean. But uh, I think, ask anyway. I think you said this in the last episode. Oh no, maybe, maybe you said it in the last main show episode. But you said something along the lines of the easiest way to do it was if we just saw on his mum's slash programmer's desk the black Apple drive. Yeah, Not like, black, the shadow one. The shadow Apple drive like on a charging port. Like just a purple one or something. The problem with that would be why would he ever use the duo when he has the original one? Because he, he was meant to get it at a certain point and he actually got a legitimate one from Minerva. This one might have been a fake one. It could have been like, for example, in Digimon Savers we see like the fake Digivices that Karata made. All I'm saying is that like to answer it subtly is great but those answers do not imply all of the follow-on answers for the questions that arise as a result you know what i would have liked more of dante mon you know i was i was gonna say something and i totally forgot he's still made of stone there they just left him but ray's visiting him so it's fine you don't know that yes we do a couple of episodes ago ray went through and just gave him some a big one of those protein drinks that he has yeah he's still there but ray's looking after him it's fine okay fine because like now the Leviathan's gone, should maybe the effect wear off, or is it? Or we should. I would have liked to see that at the end. Also, what about those big scary worms in the deep in the dark? They dark were ocean? the like defense. They were like the white blood cells of Leviathan or yeah. something. They did say. Yeah, I know, but I wanted more of that because that was spooky. There were spoops. That was spoopy. I think we're done talking about Atmon, sadly. Yeah, not sadly. I'm happy to be done talking about it. And like, as much as I like the show, I don't have much more to say. Yeah, I don't have much more to say either. But like, thank you, Atmon, for giving us a really, really good Digimon season. Thank you very, very much. I want everyone to watch you. Ariga, thanks kazai much. Oh my god. So you can email us at lostintranslationmon at gmail.com or you can comment on this episode or messages on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translationmon on Twitter and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook and YouTube. We had a discussion thread on With the Will and a red thread in the Atmon subreddit and we would appreciate if you were to view us on iTunes and or Stitcher. And we have a website where you can check out my Apple ranking which is now complete. You can donate to our Patreon which will link in the description from as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month gets you access to a list of Slack chat group but higher levels gets you exclusive notes, information, early and unedited episode recordings, Skype calls with May and Jay, the ability to suggest discussion topics and more. And thank you to our current Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, who has a podcast called The Moncast, which talks about Pokemon and Digimon, Stevie, who is Stevie Padamon on Tumblr and is currently taking commissions, Wu Long, who can find at twitch.tv forward slash Wu Long, Metal Mimemon, Joe, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki and the number one on YouTube, Penguin Mage, Chakmon, Ishpal Bamba, Hiro Olato, who is at Hiro Olato on Twitter, Jason Moroski, Ruchi, who is Frost and Magic on Archive of Our Own, Stephen Reeves, who is at Wildwing64 on Twitter, Kaidawashi, Mac, Noam, Riku, Chisai, who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr, Corey, Kyle, The Lady Bugman, whose anime blog you can find at baguburagu.wordpress.com, Small Wolfie, who is on Topastic as Small Wolfie and has a comic there called Eden of Melancholy, Tom, Glitchgoat, Azrael McCool, Gene Hackmon, Matthew, Anthony, who is at Anto Classic on Twitter, Lizmet, who is a Lekmon on Tumblr, Sithobi, Ellie Vorg, who is Ellie Vorg on Tumblr, Sporky McFork and Spoon, who is a Digimon podcast called Going Digital, Megan, Kyliak, Neobu, Jams, The Time Optimist, and the Sil- and Silverhead Freak 25. You can also make a one donation on PayPal, which we found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash Ergemon. Make sure to listen to the podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Well, I guess we should not talk about Atmon though, but in another podcast, I guess. Bye. Bye again. Okay, hi, Kay, Mina, Mina, Samo, Neko, Mushak, Shimo, Teo, Hansha. Okay, Kia, Miki, Kushak, Demo, Iyo, Mishak, Shishinai, Denori, Dadas, Oi